Meet Rory Barnes. He's an astronomer and astrobiologist at the University of Washington. He's a happy guy and he's interested in planetary science. And he's interested, for example, in the formation and evolution of exoplanets. He edited this volume in 2010. And he's interested in tidal locking of habitable planets in 2017. Most recently, he's been very interested in some computer software called vPlanet, the virtual planet simulator. And if you want to simulate planets, I can recommend it. I sat down with him in Washington and I asked him, Rory, are we alone? My name is Rory Barnes. I'm a professor of astronomy, astrobiology, and data science at the University of Washington. All right, and are we alone? I don't know. Okay, when I asked you that question, what did you understand by the word we? Uh, I meant this planet, uh, the life on this planet, if it's uh, alone in the universe. Okay, and uh, are viruses alive? Uh, it's a good question, I don't know. So when you said the word life on this planet, you weren't quite sure what that meant? Uh, no, I, yeah, there are obviously life is a difficult uh, thing to, de to define. If we found bacteria-like things on Mars, would we be alone? I would say no. Some people say yes. Probably. Because they'd like to talk to things. They think that, you know, who cares about bacteria? I want to find something that I can talk to. Sure, of course. But uh, yeah, I think that the big question for me is, is there other, are there other worlds in the universe that possess life? And so for me, if there being bacteria on Mars, that would be the answer to that question is, no, we are not alone. How about viruses on Mars? Well, I think, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just not a virologist, so I, I don't really know how to answer that question precisely, but I would certainly be intrigued if that were there. Yeah, but but <laughs> if it's the case that life evolved from non-life, then we might find every example of everything in between on some other planet, and then you'd have to answer this. Well, you did try to answer sure. the question, are we alone? So, well, I don't know because I don't know whether that's quite what I consider life. Well, my understanding of viruses is that they require single-celled organisms to reproduce, so to speak. And so I would think that would imply the presence of other forms of life that I think most people would agree are life. So I would be very intrigued, but I would certainly want to find those other organisms that they might be uh, living through. Part of your research contributes to answering this question, are we alone? Yeah, so my research is about simulating the formation and evolution of planets, especially those that might be habitable. And so uh, we try and bring together uh, a lot of different physical models that have been developed throughout uh, many disciplines of science. And so we're generating a, a clearer picture of how planets can form that would support what life and how those planets might evolve over billions of years. So I think it helps us uh, identify which planets and moons might be viable targets to search for life, hopefully narrowing our search down and bringing us to answering some of these questions more quickly. Well, do you think we as a community Astrobiologists will find life? Well, I guess it depends if it's out there or not, right? Um, I don't know. Um, so you don't know whether it's out there or not? I don't know whether it's out there or not, right? Uh, so but it's hard to answer like that question. It's a gold digger who doesn't know if there's gold out there, but you keep digging. Right. So if the answer, if the question is, what does my gut tell me is life out there? The answer is yes, I think it is out there. Um, but as I said before, whether it's out there or not, I think it's a profound question to answer. Okay, since your gut knows how to answer this question, but your head doesn't, <laughs> let's ask your gut. Okay, gut, where did your gut feelings come from? Just from the sheer size of the universe, just that there are whatever 10 to the 24 stars in the universe, so probably a similar number of planets. It just seems like there's a lot of environments out there in the universe where this sort of physical chemical system that we call life could have developed. Now, Arthur C. Clarke, I think, said, uh, you know, any sufficiently advanced civilization would be indistinguishable from magic. Yep. But there's this guy, Canadian-German guy called Schroeder who said, no, no, Arthur, you're wrong. Any sufficiently advanced technology will be indistinguishable from nature. And I suppose this guy is more of an ecological conscious guy, and he thinks that if you're an advanced civilization, you uh, are more compatible with nature. You don't cut down forests, rather, you are you're, sure. It's sustainable. What do you think of that comment? I think that's a really good, nice way to say it. I hadn't thought of that or hadn't heard that comment before, but you know, I think about the long term a lot. You know, just that I don't think that cities and the way that humanity is engineering our planet is a sustainable setup. That there has to be some way to coexist a bit more with the natural forces on on our planet. So um, I do think that that that's a, an interesting way to put it. I, I do agree, though, that indistinguishable technology would be no different from magic as well. I think you know, if I handed my smartphone to somebody who lived 200 years ago, that would appear to be magic. Uh, but at the same time, 
you know, we do need to make sure that we are in a sort of equilibrium with the natural forces on a planet. So I could see how some people would argue that being, uh, it would be indistinguishable from nature. That's a, a fascinating way to put it. For some people, intelligent aliens are much more important than bacterial analogs. Mm -hmm. uh, so do you think if we replayed the tape of life, I mean, do you think once you have life on a planet, do you think it evolves towards what one might call intelligent life? Um, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, you know, we have the one example again here on Earth. Um, but at the same time, I think we are seeing on Earth, people are starting to clue into the fact that there are species on this planet that we have to describe as intelligent. They use tool, they use language. Um, so it does seem that that is uh, a natural tendency of at least complex life. Of course, you have to get to complex life, and it's not clear how often that happens. And uh, so, you know, and the other one I think about is that brain sizes generally tend to grow over time as you look uh, through the fossil record. So it does seem that brain size at least is growing, and it, uh, and, I, and it does seem that when you look at animals that they do seem to have some sort of cognitive ability. So it does. So I would say, I guess, I would lean towards it's likely, but I don't know that it's, I can't, so I wouldn't go any farther than that. Well, do you have any favorite solutions to the Fermi paradox? <laughs> I have many favorite solutions to the Fermi Tell paradox. Me your top two. My top two. Uh, okay, my top two are that it's early days in the universe, that the universe is only 13 billion years old, but yet stars will probably burn for tens of trillions of years longer. So it's just, we're just early. We it's are. Called, we're, we are the first, or one yeah, of the first. Yeah, we are one of the first. So, and I think when you just, you know, obviously people don't like that theory because it does mean we're at a special time, but we have to recognize we are at a special time. It is early in the history of stars in the universe. We are just, we are in a young universe. Um, so that's one of them. Um, so I have to pick a second. <laughs> I have so many, Charlie. You're gonna make oh, two, pick. Two, uh, yeah, yeah, we can go all day, right? Um, I guess my other, my my other scientifically motivated one really is that I think there's a lot of water worlds out there, and so it's very difficult to harness fire and electricity on a water world. And so I think there's probably lots of water worlds that have. Well, I should say, I, shouldn't, I think it's possible that there are habitable worlds out there that have life on them, but they just have no means of communicating. Now, have you seen the movie Contact? I have not. Okay. Anyway, oh, wait, no, no, I did see Contact. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's been a while. Movie, several times, uh, somebody says, well, are we alone? And the answer is, well, if we are, it would be an awful waste of space. Uh -huh. What do you think of that comment? I don't know. I don't, it doesn't seem like a waste of space to me, I guess. Uh, so there's for, a lot if of, we're alone, it's not a waste of space for you? No, I don't think so, because there's a lot of fascinating things out there. I mean, we... We learn a lot about the universe by looking at it. So, I mean, I, I don't know. It's again, it's that's a judgment that I don't know that I ascribe to the universe. I think, I guess, if I were to think about from my own personal self as an astronomer and astrobiologist, I find that space to be fascinating because I learn about neutron stars and other planets and black hole mergers. And, you know, that's just that space has to exist at some level with this distance in order for a place like the Earth to exist and be habitable. I mean, I don't, I think that's, I don't know what's the word. If you thought life was the most important part of the universe, then you would probably agree with that judgment. No, because mm -hmm. the universe has specific physical rules. And if, oh, wait, oh, I guess I see what you're getting at. You're, yeah, yeah. So um, if there is no other planet that has life, then mm -hmm. it's a big waste of space. Well, I don't know. I guess what I, where I was going was that you know, the physical laws of the universe require there to be great distances between uh, stars and planets. So I don't see that space as wasted because it, you need to have gravitational constants and fine structure constants with certain ratios to allow that enormous distance between worlds to exist. But you're asking the more fundamental question of if there are many, many billions or 10 to the 24 planets out there and only one of them has life, is that a waste of space? <laughs> I guess uh, it just seems like it you know at some level it'd be fine and, and exciting if there was a lot of life out there, but if not, it's either way. It's like I said before, whether life is out there or not, that answer is profound, and it tells us something about our existence.